welcome to our Be Wise video. In this video we'd like to show you all the things that we've learnt about being wise and safe partying. This owl is a symbol of the Pat Cronin Foundation. It represents the wise young man that Pat Cronin was. Pat Cronin's story ends at the age of 19, when he was a victim of the cowl punch. On Saturday the 16th of April 2016, Pat and his friends went out for a quiet night of drinks at their local bar. The fight just, just broke out from a minor incident and just escalated into, from what we can understand, chaos, yeah. I think. Um, yeah. There were little, little fights everywhere and Pat was just trying to um, gather all his friends together. You know, in I'll say that that act of courage, um, yeah, that was. That's when he got struck. Mm. Mm. Thousands of mourners have packed a Donvale College to farewell one punch victim Patrick Cronin. The 19 year old's Lower Plenty Bears teammates joined friends and family to pay tribute to the popular football player. As Patrick was remembered for the love he showed his family and his footy club. Patrick died last week, two days after he was punched from behind during a brawl at a Diamond Creek hotel. Wanting to spread awareness to the issue and keep the memory of Pat alive, his family organised the Pat Cronin Foundation. The Pat Cronin Foundation helped show the issue of the cow punch and the hopes of stopping it. The Pat Cronin Foundation honours Pat by providing an optimistic voice to awareness, education and research about the coward punch, helping people feel empowered to make change through wise decisions. The Pat Cronin Foundation is urging people to be wise. What does this mean? We thought we'd spell it out for you. And let's start talking about our brain. Welcome to your brain, the control center for your fabulous body. The brain has nerves that go straight to the eyes, ears and other parts of the head. Other nerves connect the brain with other parts of the body through the spinal cord to control personality, senses, body functions and breathing and walking. The cerebrum is divided into two halves, the left and right. The right half controls the left side of the body and the left half controls the right half of the body. Each half, or hemisphere, has four sections called lobes. The frontal lobe controls personality, decision making and reasoning, while the temporal lobe controls memory, speech and sense of smell. The cerebellum in the back of the brain controls balance, coordination and fine muscle control, example walking. It also functions to maintain posture and equilibrium. The brain stem at the bottom of the brain connects the cerebrum with the spinal cord. It controls fundamental body functions such as breathing, eye movements, blood pressure, heartbeat and swallowing. Your brain and spinal cord are fragile, so the human body has systems that protect its control centre from injury. The skull and the meninges, the lining of the brain, protect the brain, while the bones of the spinal column protect the spinal cord, and cerebrospinal fluid, which surrounds and cushions both the brain and the spinal cord. These defences can be damaged from something as simple as one punch. So how can a single punch be so dangerous? Let's take a look. These 27 bones and 35 muscles can do amazing things. But they can do something else too. They can travel at up to 40 k's per hour, they can hit with 400 kilograms of force, and they can kill in seconds. Hey, my name's Nathan. Hi Nathan, Arthur. Nice to meet you. So Arthur, I'd like to ask about what happens when someone gets punched. And if you think of the skull as a, as a hard cage, and inside it you've got your brain and spinal fluid around that that acts as a cushion, that it's floating there and being protected. When you get hit hard, the brain rattles around in that skull. And as it hits the side of the skull, you, can, you get concussion. Uh, is that likely to cause someone to die, being punched like that? 
Not usually that. Um, during the impact of the punch, if you become unconscious, you can fall over. And as you fall down, your head can hit the concrete or whatever hard surface you're near. And that's actually usually the more serious injury. Thank you for that. Our brain needs to be looked after. And remember, be there, aware and proactive. Be a mate. Our second letter is E. E can stand for many words. We'd like to talk about some of the things that we've learned about safe partying. Some of these E words are to engage. Also, we want to make sure you enjoy your night. And last of all, we'd like to talk to you about how we can keep everybody safe. So if one punch can really kill, why do people throw them around so much? Straight away and called straight for the medical attention. We're pinned here again. Head has hit the ground in this tackle without any question. Cross to remonstrate with Jonas after the big hit on Gary. That's gone a little bit over the line. I don't think he'll like that when he sees the replay. There with him, but he keeps going. Oh. He has flat. Bench afterwards, he was just rattled. I mean, I, he didn't play much further part in the game. I think that's great ability. Uh... Hall wanted a free kick, lost his call, cool, and that is an ugly incident. So that's how you want to play it, old man? No dessert? Oh, sure. We'll eat our dinner right after you eat this. Ah! What's the difference between anger and aggression? Why is it important? Anger is an emotion like any other. Everybody feels angry at times. Angry feelings are completely acceptable. Anger is not just an emotional feeling. It's a behavior trigger and triggers a physical response. Our brain signals the release of adrenaline. Our heart rate increases and our muscles grow tense, ready for flight or flight. Aggressive behavior, however, is not okay. Aggressive behavior looks like a person throwing things, slamming doors or breaking stuff because he or she feels angry. Excessive alcohol consumption among men is also associated with increased aggression and consequently an increased risk of perpetrating violence against others. Alcohol also increases the risk of becoming a victim of a violent assault.
yeah, you just drag them out and talk about what they're about to do. Be wise. What I would do to stop a fight is I would simply just distract the person by taking them over to somewhere else or asking them to speak to me. Um, try to distract your mate if you see that they're in trouble in any way. Um, ask them to pull them inside, pull them aside and say, oh, um, can I talk to you? Yeah, just try to find ways to, to distract him. Uh, tell your mate you'll buy him a drink if they leave. Yeah, I'll just pull them away and just tell them to have a breather. Uh, I'll say, um, time's up, boys. Just give them good motivational speech, tell them it's not worth it. Tell them they've got better things to do in their life and move on. Just tell them to calm down, it's not a fight. Sweet. Use your hands for anything else but throwing a punch. According to updated research conducted at Monash University's Institute of Forensic Medicine in Melbourne in 2019, there was 127 one-punch one deaths in Australia between 2000 and 2016. 94% of victims were males, average age 37 years. 73% of fatalities involved alcohol, with small number of cases involving illicit drugs. These deaths occurred on the weekend at homes, pubs and clubs between 12pm and 3am. Despite awareness, one-punch deaths keep happening. There are a number of one-punch victims who do not die but end up permanently mentally and physically disabled from the assault. Survivors may be left in a vegetative state or endure lifelong severe of mental and physical disabilities, preventing them from working, enjoying personal interests and separating them from their family and friends. For many of the bedridden, they are reduced to living away from their family in permanent care nursing homes. The implications of drinking excessively can increase the risk of injury in a one-punch victim. Yeah. Every one of these deaths is completely preventable. <laughs>